Again, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. We appreciate that, as always. Welcome to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, where you get to make the call, and all you have to do is call us at 412-575-2600. You can also tweet us at KD Pomp, at Gene Collier, and let us know what you think tonight on the hotline, sponsored by Bordis and Bordis. Steelers got back to work today with heavy hearts after uh, the death of Daryl Drake two days ago. Um, and obviously it was difficult for a lot of guys to get on the field. They had a group prayer session. Juju Smith-Schuster, more than anyone that I saw up there today, really was taking this the hardest. Uh, Ryan Switzer cried when he went to the field, had to be consoled by James Washington. A lot of raw feelings there. And Mike Tomlin said today they brought in some grief counselors to deal with this uh, in case anyone has to you know, get some professional help for handling this situation. So they're doing all the right stuff, and I thought Mike Tomlin did a very good job as a leader of this group. Um, navigating them through this kind of difficult time. So they were back at it. They had to get back to work. Um, that's one thing uh, you know about life. Three words. It goes on. And it always goes on. It will. Uh, business of football goes on. So they have a game against the Chiefs coming up. Uh, and they put at least half of practice in before it was rudely interrupted by torrential rain today in Latrobe. Uh, and so the players were escorted off the field as quickly as they could because there was lightning in the area as well. We welcome in Gene Collier, outstanding columnist with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. So it was just a typical day of football in Latrobe in July with rain and thunder involved. Yeah, <laughs> it's always hot, it always rains, it always lights like a couple of practices. Uh, the one thing that's different about it recently is it's short. Uh, Stu was really only up there about three weeks. You know, I was talking with uh, John Banizak on the field up there a couple of weeks ago, and he recalled the time when they were not only in camp for seven or eight weeks, but at one year they actually played seven preseason games, including the what was called the college all-star game. So this has really been tailored down. Thursday's the last day they come back, and they really get into a regular season rhythm, even though there will be um, uh, three uh, exhibition games uh, to play. And I think... Uh, you know, more and more teams are uh, eschewing uh, training camp entirely. Uh, the Steelers, I don't think, will ever do that because of their great relationship with St. Vincent. Uh, but I think they'll be glad to, uh, you know, get into their seasonal routine, if you will. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's enough time to be spent up there. I think oh, yeah. it does help. I really do think it's a good bonding experience for mm -hmm. new guys and young guys and older guys to get together, get to know one another because they have nowhere else to go. They're in these dorms and they have to stay there. So at night they want to get out of their dorms because when you're living with someone else, chances are you want your own freedom. No. And it, it encourages you know, socializing, not just texting. All right. the things that I think are important still today that we see um, you know, fewer examples of. Anyway, the one thing Mike Tomlin did when he was talking about the game tape they broke down was rave about Devin Bush, who did do some things. In fact, Tomlin said it reminded him of Ryan Shazier's first preseason game. And I remember broadcasting that very similar. I looked back at the numbers, nine tackles. He also had five unassisted tackles. Shazier I'm talking about. In this right. game last week, it was Bush with 10, um, three unassisted, seven, but still 10. He almost had a pick six. He did all the things, Gene, that Mike Tomlin compared to Ryan Shazier, the man he's trying to replace. Yeah, and it was it was very similar, but I would remind everybody that, you know, Ryan Shazier's career up until his injury was not, you know, a perfect arc either. I mean, he, right. you know, he got off to kind of a slow start, and it took him a little while to figure things out. And uh, I anticipate that'll happen with Devin Bush, too, although, you, you know, you saw – uh, what he can do and what his aptitudes are, and you know, looks pretty promising. Antonio Brown just won't stop. Now, even though the arbitrator said you're going to lose your grievance, he showed up at camp, even though he said he may never play football again. So I don't know how much of this was just another opportunity for exposure, whatever the case may be. But he's looking now for a helmet that will uh, be available. Someone has it because they manufacture stuff year 2010 or later if you go before 2010 right now that does not meet nfl safety uh, requirements so he's he's actually put a tweet out where he promised if you come up with one of these helmets which i'll take and repaint and use i will give you a signed oakland raider helmet that i've used in practice gene my question is if someone has one of those helmets is that all you're going to settle for he has a lot of money i would say you want my helmet it's going to cost you one million dollars <laughs> Well, no, I, what would you? Would that be enough? I, Another signed helmet? No idea. I was rooting around the basement tonight after <laughs> I saw those tweets. I couldn't come up with anything. That's also the reason I don't play football anymore. They won't give me my old helmet. I know. I think you, you've been very staunch about that. I You're know. not going to go in unless they give Since you the I old was, helmet. 
18. <laughs> All right. We have more to talk about. Mitch Keller wins his first game in the majors last night. We'll get into that and plenty more. 412-575-2600. That's the number to call. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call live on Pittsburgh CW.